Would you please start by telling us about Nemo's Garden? Sure. I'm actually right now into biosphere number two, which is approximately six meters underwater. And what we are doing is we are growing plants underwater. Okay. How are plants grown so, underwater exactly? Well, uh, we designed uh, five years ago, we started with a experiment which was most um, more of a uh, fun uh, thing to try rather than experiment. And now it became a real pilot plant, which I'm standing in, a structured experiment. And what we did in five years is we developed these uh, biospheres, we call them biospheres. They are um, rigid plastic uh, domes filled with air, of course, I am breathing, but I am in a scuba gear because I'm underwater. So inside these biospheres, we installed a hydroponic system that you can see behind me. Um, <clears throat> this hydroponic system is made to grow plants. And the reason is we are using what nature gives us for free, uh, naturally underwater, which is stable temperature. The water in which I'm standing right now is cooler than the air inside. Uh, but during the winter, it's the opposite and the air inside is a lot warmer than the water in which I would be standing. And this is because the water, of course, has a heat capacity which is higher than the air. So it cools off and heats up slower. And we're using this as a temperature stabilizer for the, for the plants. At the same time, we have evaporation. So the surface of water, I don't know if you can see right here, right beneath me. Yes. The surface of here evaporates uh, naturally, like it happens in the ocean above me, <laughs> and how it happens in any surface of water. So the molecules become vapor, and as soon as they reach the biosphere itself, which is a little colder, um, they become fresh water. They become fresh water, and so we have three fresh water constantly producing here that we can use to uh, hydrate our plants. We have enough sunlight, as you can see, to grow plants pretty, pretty well. Let's see if I can show you one. It's growing very well, I would say. Um, and uh, at the same time, this uh, depth is enough to shield us from the harmful part of the spectrum of the light. And well, of course, we are six meters underwater, so we are completely far from any kind of parasite or, um, or climate event that may harm the plants. So they're pretty safe over here, and they are away from harm's way. Then the last factor for which we are underwater is pressure. So right now I'm, I am breathing a, an atmosphere which is different from outside, uh, not in the composition, Technically speaking, there is oxygen, there is nitrogen, just like outside. But it's a higher pressure, which means that the plants uh, apparently grow faster and better thanks to this pressure. So this is a lot, a lot of insight into the project. <laughs> I don't want to bore you too much with it. Not at all. Would you please tell us about the technology itself, the spheres, which technologies do they contain, and the tree of life? Uh, the biospheres themselves are um, a kind of plastic, which is metacrylic plastic, transparent, they're molded in one piece, and they have a, a frame inside, as you can see, to support me, and to support the different uh, uh, technologies that we have inside. It is all protected by patents that we put on the project itself. Um, we have water pumps. It's a small buzzing sound that you can hear underneath me talking. It's right here, let's see if I can turn it. It's right here on the left. Mm -hmm. Maybe on the right for you guys, of course. Um, and it's the, uh, the pump that is automatic, actually. We can, um, we can schedule, of course, the, the, the pump's function, so I'm not touching anything to turn it on. Uh, and it moves water from the bottom, where we collect it, to the top of the hydroponic system. 
um, we have all types of sensors. Uh, the tech box has all sensors. Uh, maybe you can see it right there. Yes. The tech, the tech box. It's a really clever um, piece of equipment uh, that we designed. Um, we have we have all kinds of sensor inside it. We have oxygen sensor, of course, just to be sure that I don't die over here <laughs> without without any oxygen. Um, we have a CO2 sensor as well, so we know how much carbon dioxide is inside. That is dangerous as well, but at the same time, it's very good for the plants. We have temperature, internal temperature, outside temperature. Uh, we have humidity, which is, of course, very important for the growth of the plants. And we have the, the whole tech box um, connects the pump, the fan that now is um, it's not going because it's not scheduled to go now, but it's right above me, the wiper, the LED lights, and uh, um, it controls everything. It sends everything to the land and to the internet because we have Wi-Fi underwater. That's why we're talking on Skype right now. <laughs> thanks to Wi-Fi, uh, it's kind of cool. And the Tree of Life, which is, I don't know if I can show you, I will try to turn this around, just bear with me a second. Wow! Can, I, can you see it? Not really, no. Maybe you can see it, there's it's a... It's barely visible, but I can see it. Yeah. It's the tree of life right there. I will see. Maybe this is better? Yes, much better. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't really can see where the camera is, but yeah, you can see also a couple of fish over there. <laughs> um, the tree of life is um, something that Balich, uh, the famous worldwide shows company, uh, let us use. We. Um, the design we got from Milan 2015 Expo um, that they built over there. Uh, they got an inspiration themselves from Michelangelo and we use it as of course an attraction for tourists but at the same time we use it as a uh, place from which all our cables uh, go from land to the tree of life which is in the center and then branch out to all the six biospheres we have underwater. So it's both a symbol and something useful for us. And it's a beautiful view, honestly, from here, from underwater. So you have six biospheres. And how scalable is the, is the technology? So um, this is a pilot plant. And of course, we could replicate um, in many different places. That will be the first phase to um, to make it scalable. We need to see how it works in different environments. We'll soon have one in Belgium, in a place called Todi, which I highly recommend to go and visit. Um, and we'll hopefully have one uh, next year in the lake of Como, Italy. So, and the, the both will be in fresh water, so very different from where I am here. Um, the scalability uh, starts from the, 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 the possible implementation in many different places in the world, but it's just one phase. Um, if we want to improve the technology, we need to continue to invest, of course, so it's up to us and hopefully also up to somebody else who wants to invest in the project as well. Uh, but I think that the actual scalability is just the possibility of replicating many of these. Ultimately, we have such a huge space in the oceans of the world that cover more than 70% of the surface of the world that is available that I think it's logic to think that just uh, you know hundreds of these could be very helpful in reducing the pressure on agriculture, traditional agriculture right now. Uh, I think it's an alternative way, I think it's something that can still improve. We did this on our own and I mean we make we make scuba diving equipment, so very strange, but still scuba diving equipment. Um, and we are definitely not agronomists, biologists, and I think that with a team of both, uh, completely dedicated to the project, we could even improve the yield of 
our plants, which grow so well, even just with a little bit of, you know, green finger from ourselves. So if it were done uh, industrially, so with somebody who knew exactly how to get the best out of the, the, the plants themselves, the plants themselves, I think we could, uh, we could be really close to a very good uh, industrialization of the system. And how do these biospheres affect the marine marine environment? <laughs> um, I wish I could move the camera more easily, but you should see. Um, the, I mean, the chains are full of seahorses, uh, snails, fish. Small fish live under our protection um, so that people don't come inside. Uh, they live under here. Yeah, I see one right there. Uh, small fish are born under the biospheres because they look like a shelter, and they are, for bigger pro uh, uh, predators. And around this uh, uh, this chain, you know, food chain, everything is developed. It's full of fish around here. And it's something that everybody knows already. It's not something that we invented. Um, everybody knows that if you, make, if you put a, an artificial reef or a, a well uh, suited um, wreck underwater, it will get, it will become full of life in an instant. It's just how things work under underwater. It's one of the problems in working underwater, but it's also one of the, you know, the best things that that happens underwater. I, it's full of fish over here, and um, I think they integrate perfectly with the environment. N nothing that we use is polluting, so this of course is imperative on our side, um, and eventually it's offering a shelter for many different types of organisms. So even here in uh, Noli, Italy, specifically in the place where we are, it's, you know, it's gravel, it's sand, it's not really reef or a beautiful scenery underwater, but nonetheless it now is beautiful and full of fish thanks to this environment. So we also added a um, forest of invertebrates, uh, which um, is basically a number of ropes that are connected to a buoy, each buoy, and they stand vertical. That's why we call them the forest. And all of these ropes that are made of organic material, um, we grow, or actually naturally, a lot of invertebrates and animals and algae grow. And then we will take these animals unfortunately for them, and rinse them out of salt, and we will use them as fertilizer for the plants in an attempt to create a fully sustainable system because even though the fertilizer we're using right now is organic, and I'm sorry, uh, bio, of course, it is still something that we cannot provide um, from down here. So we are trying to um, create a system for fertilization uh, by copying what many are doing already, because it's really well known that you can use algae as as fertilizer. So it's we're trying to not only integrate with the environment, but really completely integrate with the environment in a full way. And you already mentioned some of the future plans for Nimbus Garden, but what exactly are you planning to do in the following years? Mm, mm, our first plan is to um, perfect all the technology there is. There is so much we need to do and it's just five years since we started and honestly it's been three years since we uh, really put ourselves on it. Two years it was more, more kind of a fun thing that we were doing on our downtime, but now it's really a huge project and um, so uh, we need to concentrate a lot on the technologies we're applying and my dream is that we uh, create a whole new branch of the group, of the company, the Ocean Reef Group, dedicated to this. I think Nemo's Garden has incredible potential, not only to um, you know, create a profit, which of course is interesting for, for anybody, but um, to create jobs, employment, to employ scientists, um, to be an alternative way of researching also. I mean, this is an underwater laboratory which is pressurized, so it's pretty exciting, and it's, the potential is really incredible. To do this, I think that 
us as a family, Emirini, and as a company which is making tons of different things and projects, we have reached really what not maybe this not the apex, not not the, you know the highest point, but definitely a state of the art momentarily. Now on, I think it's a matter of finding the right investors, being them public, being them private, uh, but really believing the idea. They understand the idea, and they don't think it's just a marketing stunt. It would be kind of complicated if it were just a stunt. Um, and uh, yeah, once we invest in creating a real team, huge and um, completely heterogenic, you know, different. Uh, we are mostly engineers and people in economics, but there's a need of scientists, of biologists, um, agronomists, why not? We need to know more about the plants we're growing. Um, and when we're done with that, we will be able to really know if this project can become what I think it can become, which is a huge alternative for standard agriculture. Okay. Thank you very much, Luca. It was a pleasure talking to you.